Thanks for joining us. An Islamic terrorist group backed by Iran has fired a missile at the United Arab Emirates. The attack came during a visit by Israel's president over the weekend. The rebels are vowing to continue attacking the UAE as long as it's friendly with Israel. Chris Mitchell has the latest on the UAE's response. The UAE says it destroyed a ballistic missile site in Yemen after shooting down a missile fired at their country by an Iranian-backed rebel group. The attack came during the historic visit of Israeli President Isaac Herzog to the UAE capital Abu Dhabi after the two nations signed an historic peace agreement in 2020. We are two successful nations who basically started with very little in our hands, developed our lands into a successful paradise, and this is sends a message to the entire region that there is an alternative for peace and living together and that the sons and daughters of Hegra can reside and dwell together in peaceful coexistence. Crown Prince Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed thanked Herzog for Israel's support after the two recent missile attacks by the Houthi rebels. It's a stance that demonstrates our common view of the threats to regional stability and peace, particularly those posed by militias and terrorist forces, as well as our shared understanding of the importance of taking a firm stance against them. Dr. Najat Al-Sayed of the American University in Dubai said the timing of the visit demonstrates that the new relationships between Israel and its Arab neighbors will stand up to threats by Iran's proxies in the region. We're going to support the war and peace, which is the main kind of peace that kills the hostile and extremist ideologies. Israeli Reserve Brigadier General Yossi Kupovicer said it also comes in the context of the U.S. pulling back in the region and developments with Iran. Coming to uh, the UAE in, in a time like that, when uh, the fate of the Iranian nuclear project is going to be determined, uh, is, uh, is very important for Israel and to show that we are there together with the United Arab Emirates facing this uh, radical threat. It's, uh, it's very important strategically. The U.S. State Department condemned the attack. Spokesman Ned Price tweeting, while Israel's president is visiting the UAE to build bridges and promote stability across the region, the Houthis continue to launch attacks that threaten civilians. Meanwhile, the rebels threaten more attacks. The Yemeni armed forces confirm that the UAE enemy state will remain unsafe as long as the tools of the Israeli enemy remain in Abu Dhabi and Dubai, launching aggression against our dear country. Despite the attack, President Herzog continued his trip as planned. Both Israel and the UAE pledge they won't let Iran stand in their way from creating a new Middle East. To maintain the strong and growing alliance in the region, it will need the help of the U.S. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Well, peace is breaking out in the Middle East. It's all because of the Abraham Accords. It's all because of a bold initiative to say, let's bring peace. Let's bring peace to Israel. Let's bring peace to the Middle East. And certain ideologies that are just bent on destruction of Israel don't like that at all. What I don't understand is how can you possibly negotiate with Iran? How can you possibly say they'll hold to any agreement uh, that they aren't trying to develop a nuclear weapon. Uh, now, more than ever, we need to keep the pressure on to say, no, if you're going to continue with this kind of ideology of hate, that you are going to be isolated from the international community. We're going to shut off your sources of funds. We're going to, to boycott you. We're going to impose severe sanctions on you until you change. Uh, it, w without that, I just don't see that there's any way to have peace or, or to go into any kind of negotiations with them. Well, in other news, the mother of all sanctions. Well, that's just one point of pressure. The United States is threatening to use if Russia invades Ukraine. John Jessup has more from our CBN News Bureau in Washington. John? Thanks, Gordon. The United Nations Security Council is set to press Russia over its military buildup on Ukraine's borders today. U.S. officials say they're giving Russia an opportunity to explain its actions and find a way to avoid war. 
We are prepared to address our concerns, uh, Ukrainian concerns and Russian concerns at the diplomatic table, but it cannot be done on the battlefield. The Russians are dismissing the U.N. meeting as a publicity stunt, and they claim they're pulling back some of their 100,000-plus troops on Ukraine's border. NATO officials say the alliance will not send in troops to Ukraine. However, Britain is considering a major deployment to the region. Meanwhile, U.S. lawmakers are nearing completion on a bill they call the mother of all sanctions on Russia's economy if it does indeed invade. Well, North Korea launched its most powerful ballistic missile in five years. These photos released by the regime show the Hwasong-12 missile in flight Sunday. The intermediate-range weapon is nuclear-capable and has the ability to reach the U.S. territory of Guam. It is Pyongyang's seventh missile test this month. The White House plans to plans a response to, to, to the test to reassure regional allies. Well, here at home, the first of President Biden's potential nominees for the Supreme Court is now publicly known. The White House confirming U.S. District Judge J. Michelle Childs of South Carolina is on the list to replace retiring Justice Stephen Breyer. Childs is backed by South Carolina Congressman James Clyburn, who is also the House Majority Whip. Biden is said to be considering multiple candidates to the court while standing by his campaign pledge to nominate an African-American woman. That stand has prompted pushback from some Republicans, Maine Senator Susan Collins saying it was, quote, clumsy and politicized the process. And Mississippi Senator Roger Wicker said whoever the president picks will be a, quote, beneficiary of affirmative action. Speaking Sunday, South Carolina Republican Lindsey Graham disagreed. I believe there are plenty of qualified African-American women, conservative and liberal, that could go on to the court. So I don't concede that I don't see Michelle Childs as an act of affirmative action. I do see putting a black woman on the court, making the court more like America. An ABC News Ipsos poll out Sunday shows 76 percent of Americans believe the president should consider all possible candidates for the court. Well, a historic nor'easter packed a punch up and down the East Coast this weekend, leaving people in some areas to dig out of several feet of snow and frigid temperatures. CBN senior national affairs correspondent Heather Sells has our report. The storm hit the East Coast hard this weekend, with snow falling from here in Virginia all the way up the coast to Maine. And that means digging out today. The hardest hit state, Massachusetts, which received record snow. This was officially designated a blizzard by the National Weather Service, and we reached a total of 23.8 inches of snow. That is the second biggest January storm in Boston history. South of Boston, one community saw 30 inches. Some coastal areas flooded, this house encased in snow. Boat marinas seen in these aerial shots froze over. And wind gusts reached 99 miles an hour in one Cape Cod community. The weather also proved deadly with four storm-related deaths on Long Island, New York. Three were older men out shoveling snow. At the height of the storm, the winds and frigid temperatures led to outages. 100,000 lost power at one point. The snow and ice also affected travel. These tractor trailers overturned on I-95 in New York. And throughout the weekend, thousands of flights were canceled in Philly, New York and Boston. At Logan Airport, a fleet of snow plows worked to keep up with the runways. Snow may have stopped. But the work did not. There's so much more we have to do, and we are doing just that. Today, the digging out continues from Maryland to Maine. I didn't go out, so, you know, I just kind of stayed in and cooked and ate. Thousands of travelers are now trying to reach their destinations. There's nowhere warm to go on the East Coast, however. The cold even hit Florida, dipping into the 20s and icing over orange groves. And another winter storm is brewing, expected to bring snow and ice from Denver to Chicago later this week. Heather Sell, CBN News. Can't seem to catch a break. Thank you, Heather. Terry, back to you. Thanks, John. Well, that was brutal for the East Coast, but it is January, so we can expect more, I'm sure. Hopefully not like that. A preemptive strike by Israel against Iran's nuclear program. Speculation over this possibility has gone on for years. One Israeli analyst has studied the issue for more than a decade 
and he has a dire warning about the devastating consequences such action might bring. Chris Mitchell brings us the story. In 2012, Yaakov Katz, now the editor-in-chief of the Jerusalem Post, served as the paper's defense analyst. As co-author of Israel versus Iran, The Shadow War, he examined the potential for an attack on Iran's nuclear program. It seemed at the time that Israel was capable of doing it. I, I, I distinctly remember one meeting that I was brought into at the Air Force headquarters in Tel Aviv with the top Air Force general who... Uh, basically laid out, you know, rolled out a map on a table and showed us how the Israeli Air Force squadrons would fly to Iran. At the time, Israel prepared night and day. The Air Force had been training extensively for this operation. Billions and billions of shekels had been poured in to this planning and, and to training and to buying up the munitions and the, and the technology and the weapons that would be needed to take out some of the facilities. Then Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Defense Minister Ehud Barak tried but failed to convince the cabinet, army and security chiefs to take action. In the end, that never happened. So that was the backdrop back in 2012. And it seemed real, it seemed viable, and it seemed like Israel had a real opportunity to cause enough damage to set back Iran's nuclear program. Now, 10 years later, the problem and targets remain the same. Natanz, Iran's main uranium enrichment facility. Fordo, with thousands of centrifuges burrowed into a mountain. To the west, a rock where a heavy water plutonium facility is under construction. And further south, Iran's uranium conversion facility in Isfahan. Since this scenario hasn't changed in 10 years, what about Israel's military capability? Israel today, Chris, is stronger than it was back in 2012, right? If back in 2012, we had F-15s and F-16s, so those are fourth generation fighter jets that are detectable on radar. Today, we have F-35s. These are the, the JSF, the Joint Strike Fighters, that have stealth flight capabilities that can basically go fly into an enemy, enemy airspace, not be detected, and can take out radar installations as well as surface-to-air missile systems, can basically pave the way for then the big heavy bombers, the F-15s and the F-16s, to come in and drop a ton of munitions all over these different facilities to destroy them. The question a lot of people have been asking over and over again throughout the years, can Israel do it? Well, I think it's a little more complicated today, Chris. I think that back in 2012, the feeling was that, yes, it could do it. Then Iran's nuclear program is not as advanced as it is today. It was not as heavily fortified as it is today. It was not as dispersed as it is today. With that said, uh, even then, it would have been just causing enough damage to set them back for a period of time. Middle East expert Joel Rosenberg laid out a number of top stories to look at in 2022. At the top of the list, an Israeli attack on Iran. We've never had to do it before. Covert operations and all kinds of other shadow activities to keep Iran from getting the bomb without having to go to what's called a kinetic war, a full-on actual war. Katz points out even if there were an attack, it wouldn't be the end of the story. And I think that no one has any illusion to believe that if Israel attacks Iran, that's it. There's never going to be a nuclear program. No, there can be because... The Iranians have the domestic know-how, they have the technology, it's in their heads. And while you can destroy their facilities and infrastructure, you can't take away that knowledge. Plus, any military move likely leads to a regional war, with Iran unleashing Hezbollah, its arm in Lebanon, to fire thousands of missiles into Israel. That is not a war we want to be in. We might have to do it, but I mean, that those stakes are just so high, and I think that's, to me, that's the far away the biggest story. I think that Israel has means at its disposal. The question, though, comes down to, is it worth it? Is the damage that you will cause Iran's nuclear infrastructure going to be worth the war that will ensue, the international condemnations that you will almost definitely face from the world? It's an age-old dilemma that now faces a new set of Israeli leaders. I don't think Israel can live with a nuclear Iran, right? I think a nuclear Iran has the potential to pose an existential threat to the state of Israel. So it's not like I'm saying we should just sit back and let this happen. No, we have to do what we have to do, but we also have to realize that sometimes power has its limits. So it's, it's complicated. As Israeli military and political leaders increasingly warn about a looming attack, Rosenberg believes Israel's options are running out. I don't hear it as um, hyperbolic. I don't hear it as, as uh, trying to, you know, be sensationalistic. I think Israeli leaders 
are realizing this is it. Iran has gone past all of the previous red lines that any Israeli government has ever said. But no Israeli prime minister wants to go to war. The threat, sadly, is still there. And it, it needs to be dealt with. I would hope and pray that it can be dealt without the use of force, without the need for war and bloodshed. That is always the Israeli and Jewish uh, preference, right, is to be able to do this through peaceful means, through dialogue, through discussion, through a deal. But unfortunately, we are dealing with a murderous regime that has so much blood on its hands that it's only seeking and hungry for more. And, and that's why it needs to be stopped. And another part of history also remains, as Katz points out, often the Jewish people stand alone. That famous saying of Hillel the Elder, a Jewish scholar from the period of the Talmud from a couple thousand years ago, who said back in the back in the time in Hebrew, which translates into English, if I'm not if I am not for myself, who will be for me? And what was true thousands of years ago for the Jewish people is still so true in the year 2022. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Now we're under a, an obligation to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, to pray for the peace of Israel. Uh, and more than just the biblical admonition, uh, in, in modern times, the Israeli people, the Jewish people, have a right to self-determination. Their enemies have been against them for their entire existence. They declared independence back in 1948, and immediately, I mean, the very same day, five Arab nations surrounding them declared war. We're sort of at the end game of this. The Abraham Accords have brought some peace. Uh, some nations have said, well, let's cooperate with Israel. Let's learn from each other. Let's have trade. Let's have peace. Uh, why are we spending so much money on all of these weapons when we could be creating wonderful cultures, uh, wonderful nations, wonderful societies for our people? Well, Iran is under an ideology. They have to fuel that. And part of their ideology is to wipe Israel off the map. Uh, and we need to recognize it for what it is. It's absolutely evil. You can't negotiate with that. You can't negotiate with somebody who has dedicated their entire political existence on your removal from the planet. So what do you do? And, and, and where do you go? We're in a much different world than Israel was when they took out Iraq's nuclear facility. Uh, that was, well, seems like an age ago. And then more recently, they took out Syria's attempt to uh, obtain a nuclear weapon. They had gotten technology from North Korea, actively building a nuclear reactor to create nuclear fissionable material. Uh, those attacks were enormously successful to take out the ability of those uh, nation states to build nuclear weapons. It's a different matter and a completely different game today with Iran. All of this technology is dispersed. It's in hardened bunkers. Uh, they have um, the technology to, to move forward. The issue is when uh, and how will they do it. But if you attack them, they will absolutely view it as a declaration of war and they will respond in kind. So what are we to do? Let's pray. Let's pray for the peace of Jerusalem. The Bible promises that there, Israel will have peace with all her neighbors. Uh, a lot of people want to quote back, well, you say peace, peace, and there is no peace. There is a promise in the book of Ezekiel that Israel will be at peace with her neighbors. Well, let's pray that into existence. $10 a day. That's all Valerie had to feed her family of five. Before long, the stress of trying to make ends meet broke her. Valerie dropped to her knees, cried out to God for help, and the result, her family's income quadrupled. <laughs> Even though both of them worked, David and Valerie Crow were having a hard time providing for their family of five. We were struggling financially. Um, I was working part-time, uh, so I had three kids that we were homeschooling, uh, and we just moved, and so it was a new place. Um, I was working as a working foreman and superintendent. We had flipped some um, properties. Uh, one of the investment properties that we had kind of went south, and we were not bringing in an awful lot of money. There were a lot of days that were really hard. I operated on a $10 a day for uh, meals for a family of five. 
and it just seemed like one thing after another. I remember one day kind of reaching my breaking point, and I remembered what somebody else had said, that they just got on their knees and cried out to God, and that's exactly what I did. And with hands up in the air, I was like, I can't do this. Then one day in 2015, Valerie came across the 700 Club. I was intrigued by the international news reporting that the news wasn't just doom and gloom, it was just news. <laughs> and then there were also so many stories of hope and encouragement. Valerie started watching the show regularly and heard about the law of reciprocity. The fact that God is just wanting us to trust him really resonated for me. And I was like, wow, that really makes sense. And it made me realize that, yes, we should be contributing to our church. They decided they would commit to giving. And we said, OK, we're going to do 3% this year. And then we bumped it up to 5%. And we kept giving and put it into our budget and made it a regular habit. They bumped their giving up again to 10%. The couple also decided to become CBN partners, starting at $20 a month. Dave was working in road construction, and Valerie ran a home-based business. The next year, even though Dave had a health crisis and could not work, they never stopped tithing. We really didn't think twice about cutting back um, or tithing. We just wanted to give more. Soon after, Valerie started a new career in real estate, earning twice as much as she had before. By the following year, Dave was healthy again and had started a new job with better benefits. And then the next thing you know, there's um, Valerie has another sale of a new home or I wind up getting a, a, a wonderful review and, and get a raise. God always paves the way. In 2018, Valerie's income doubled again. So that year, they decided to double their monthly giving to CBN. I prayed over it. And what God said to me is water. The basic necessity of people in life is water. And of course, CBN's teachings, the Operation Blessing, was an inspiration behind that because there's so many great things that Operation Blessing does. And I love how they help women with small businesses that couldn't feed their family, but now not only feed their family, but feed their community. The Crows used their increase in income to sponsor their first water well project in Guatemala. The next year, the blessings just kept coming. So they upped their giving again and funded the construction of two houses in Kenya that have a rainwater collection system to have access to water. They've also sponsored two other water projects in Guatemala, one large enough to supply fresh water to an entire community. Well, Operation Blessing is just exactly that. It's a blessing uh, to be able to go ahead and, and these uh, disaster areas, whether it's storm-related, flood-related, fire-related, and see Operation Blessing on site and to know that, well, this is great. This is what we've been contributing towards. It's, it's very satisfying. Today, the Crow's annual income is four times what it was before they began tithing consistently just six years ago. Sign up. If you trust in God, make a move to help others. It comes back to you many, many times over. Sign up. Uh, just follow what David says. Just do it and realize the blessings that will come. Here's a wonderful promise for you. It's from Psalm 91, verse 15. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Psalm 91 is a great promise. Who is it for? Because of very, the verse right before it, because he has set his love upon me. Valerie and David decided we're going to set our love upon God. We're going to trust him. We're going to rely on him. His promises will be true. We will call upon him and he will deliver us. Why? Because we have set our love upon him. It's the great commandment, love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, everything that's within you. Love him. When you do that, wonderful things will happen. You put him first, his kingdom, his righteousness, all these other things get added to you.
If you want to start a lifestyle of giving, this isn't an on-again, off-again thing. This is a regular thing. You heard it from David. Try it. When you try tithing, it will, it will pay off for you. Why? Because God stands by his word to perform it. His promise is quite true and quite clear. I will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. You just saw a wonderful blessing for a couple that was in trouble. They decided to put their heart in, into God's hands and say, we trust you with everything. Here's the tangible proof of it. We're going to start tithing. When they did that, the blessings came. The same thing will happen if you follow the same principle. So if you'd like to do that, give us a call. 1-800-700-7000. Just say at the start of this year, last day of January 2022, I'm going to start a life of tithing. Now, how much is it to join the 700 Club? It's just $20 a month. Some of you can join at much higher levels. We have 700 Club Gold at 40 a month. 1,000 Clubs, $1,000 a year. That breaks out to $84 a month. We also have 2,500 Club, 2,500 a year. Founder is $5,000 or more a year. At whatever level, God is speaking to you right now. Whatever level, give us a call. 1-800-700-7000. Now, when you join the 700 Club, we have a gift for you. My father's new book on the power of the Holy Spirit in you. In it, you'll discover all the blessings available to you through the Holy Spirit. Take a look. In Pat Robertson's latest book, The Power of the Holy Spirit in You. The Holy Spirit is infinite. If he pours out blessings on you, he can also pour out blessings on me. There are sufficient resources at the disposal of an infinite God to reward each one of us with bountiful blessings. Get Pat Robertson's latest book when you become a CBN partner. Call now or go to CBN.com. Helping people all over the world without ever leaving your living room. When you're a 700 Club partner, that's what you do every single day. Palessa is a child that you helped who lives in Africa. Because of you, she has a healthy, happy future. And for that, she'd like to thank you herself. So take a look. Palessa was only eight days old when she was abandoned and left with a family member. When she was five, she arrived at Beautiful Dream Society, a children's home supported by Orphan's Promise. Maven is her house mother. Palessa is like a daughter to me. I make sure she knows she is loved and that she has a family. I love being a part of this home because I get nice clothes and food. I like to play with the dolls and ride the bicycle. I love my family here because they take care of me and protect me. Palessa is one of 11 children in this home. Not only are they provided with an education and everything they need, they also get taught about Jesus. We teach them that the love of Jesus is unconditional, that when Jesus says he loves them, he means it, and if they know him, everything is possible. I love devotions, especially when we get to tell what we learn from the stories. I love to hear that Jesus went from house to house to preach the word of God. When I grow up, I want to be an evangelist. At school, I tell my friends about Jesus. Helping these kids makes my heart so happy. To all our supporters, we really appreciate everything you do to make their lives easier and happy. I pray that God will help you to continue giving. Thank you for everything you are doing for me. She's beautiful, isn't she? And because of your generosity and kindness, she has hope and a future. Palissa is going to have a wonderful life. Without what's being provided to her, first of all, she wouldn't know the love of God. Second, she wouldn't have education. Third, she wouldn't be in a family that would teach her what a family is so she can grow up and have a healthy family herself. All of that is a part of what you do as a CBN partner when you join the 700 Club. So we want to say thank you to you. If you're not a CBN partner, can you see the difference you could make? 65 cents a day, $20 a month means you're changing lives every single day all around the world. You can join with the rest of us right now by calling our toll-free number. It's 1-800-700-7000. Just say, I want to join the 700 Club. There are many options, as Gordon just told you, but let me show you that list again. 
First general membership, $20 a month, but you could join 700 Club Gold with a gift of $40 a month or become a 1,000 Club member at $84 a month. 2,500 Club members join us at $209 a month and our founders join us at $417 a month. That works out to $5,000 a year. When you call and you join right now, would you also do it using Pledge Express? That's electronic monthly giving. It means your bank does all the work. You don't have to remember to send anything. You don't have to have envelopes or stamps on hand. Saves a lot of work for you, and it saves some additional money for us that we can put even more into the lives of children like Polissa. So call now, make a difference. When you use Pledge Express, by the way, we're going to send you Power for Life teachings every month. So you're getting a dual gift. Pat's great new book, The Power of the Holy Spirit, and then a teaching every month to be a blessing to you. And we say thank you. Gordon? Well, as a CBN partner, you provide food, clean water, and shelter to the needy, as well as life-changing surgeries for people like the little girl you're about to meet. She was born with club feet. As she grew older, they became even more painful and twisted. And today, thanks to people like you, her feet are straight and her future is bright. Take a look. Dorga got bullied and teased in school because she had club feet. They called me lame like it was my name. It really hurt my feelings. I lost my confidence and stopped going to school. She needed surgery, but her parents couldn't afford it. My feet twisted more and more out of shape. It hurt so much. I thought I would have to live like this forever. Then her family heard about Operation Blessing. They reached out to us. An Operation Blessing soon arranged and paid for her surgery. I am very happy. Now my feet are straight like everyone else's and I can walk normally. Nobody makes fun of me anymore. Durga's confidence is back. Now I can play with my sister without any pain and problems and I have found hope in my life. I'm starting school again soon and I want to become a teacher. Thank you all for helping me. I have a new life. God bless you abundantly. If you're a member of the 700 Club, you're part of giving that wonderful girl a new life, a hope, a future, and it's all because you cared enough to give. If you're not a member, I invite you to join with us and join in everything we're doing around the world. If you are a member, I encourage you to increase this year. You can go to 700 Club Gold at $40 a month, 1,000 Club, $1,000 a year. That's $84 a month. Now, when you join and call 1-800-700-7000, make sure you ask for Pledge Express. That's electronic monthly giving. Bank doing all the work. There are a lot of ways you can sign up for it. You can call and ask for Pledge Express, or you can go to CBN.com. There's a place on the giving page where if you give monthly, you automatically sign up for Pledge Express. If you text to give, you can text CBN to 71777. Uh, a monthly giving page will automatically come up, so you join Pledge Express when you do it that way. Now, as our gift to you, we'll send you Power for Life monthly teaching CDs when you join Pledge Express, and when you become a 700 Club partner, we'll send you a copy of my father's new book on the power of the Holy Spirit in you. You'll learn how to get direct guidance from the Holy Spirit to empower your life. Take a look. In Pat Robertson's latest book, The Power of the Holy Spirit in You, discover the life that is available to you. This I can say with certainty. If a believer sincerely cries out to the Holy Spirit for guidance and direction, the Holy Spirit will move heaven and earth to keep his servant from being misled. He will bring us direct guidance and the answers we need for each step of our lives. Get Pat Robertson's latest book when you become a CBN partner. Call now or go to CBN.com. As I wrote this book, I felt that I was personally on the edge of something so enormously wonderful it should be made available to everyone who has been filled with the Spirit 
of the living God. CBN presents The Power of the Holy Spirit in You, a new book by Pat Robertson. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, nothing is impossible to us. In this powerful book, Pat illuminates the work of the Holy Spirit throughout the Bible and reveals how the Spirit is working in believers today. I marvel at the strength God gives His people when we realize that the Spirit of God will go like a mighty warrior before us and that none of our enemies can stand against us. Get Pat's book and discover how you can have the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Call now or go to CBN.com. Welcome back to Washington for the CBN News Break. A new Chick-fil-A in Texas was built on God's Word, literally. Franchise owners David and Holly Snow want their restaurant to be a place that glorifies God and blesses people, but the couple couldn't attend the groundbreaking due to the birth of their second child named Winter. So they put together an action plan by having their four-year-old son Montgomery place a Bible in the foundation during construction. Well, Orphan's Promise is working with Zarka Baptist Church in Jordan to provide educational opportunities for Syrian refugee children. There are around 650,000 Syrian refugees in Jordan. Many live in crowded refugee camps with little hope for the future. 96 children are enrolled in the weekly classes where they receive nutritious meals and tutoring in subjects like math, science, Arabic, and English. Orphan's Promise is committed to making sure these children have a chance to change their circumstances and overcome their difficult beginnings. Well, you can find out more about what CBN is doing around the world by going to CBN.com slash international. Chuck Keels had stage four prostate cancer that had spread to 90% of his bones. Doctors were just about ready to send him home to die. Then a visitor came to Chuck's bedside with a message that saved his life. Chuck Keels is a fighter. This year, he plans to bike from California to Florida in two months. Finishing the 3,000 mile trek will be an incredible feat in itself. Even more so, considering that seven years ago, he was given just three months to live. It was a really, really scary time for me, but I watched my body melt off of me. I was dying. As a single dad, Chuck enjoyed hiking and mountain biking in the hills around Phoenix where he lived with his two teenage boys, Dante and Chucky. He was in good health until mid-April of 2015. I noticed that I was getting tired. I noticed that there was pain starting in my body. Was each day I got up and it was worse. Then the evening of May 15, Chuck's pain was so intense that he went to the ER. After a battery of tests, his doctor told him he had two fractured vertebrae. What she said next, left Chuck stunned. And she said, everything you're going through is cancer related. And I just felt the tears rolling down my face. I can't believe that I have cancer um, at the age of 50 years old. Cancer makes you step back and look at what really is important in your life. For Chuck, that had always been providing for his boys. God and a relationship with him wasn't a priority. I wasn't close to God. It was, you know, church and a prayer once in a while with my kids before bed. I, I didn't go to God at that time. Biopsies would reveal Chuck had stage four prostate cancer, and it had spread to 90% of his bones. His doctors offered hospice care to ease his pain and sent Chuck home to die. That was a very, very difficult time because that's when I had to tell my boys it was a nightmare. Um, I had to sit him down on the couch and uh, explain to them that the doctors said that I might have three more months to live. Chuck made plans to move back to Ohio, where extended family would take care of his boys after he was gone. You plan for a graduation, you plan for a wedding, you plan for these things when you're a parent, you know, and all of a sudden this diagnosis comes down and then it starts going through your head. You know, you're not gonna see that you know, graduation. You won't see them get married. And uh, it was, <laughs> it was tough. It was really tough. On May 25th, the morning they were to leave Arizona, Chuck was walking down the hall when he heard a pop. And the next thing I know is I'm flat on my face on the ground and I couldn't move. The pain was excruciating. Um, it felt like uh, somebody was stabbing me in the back with a knife and then running it up to my head. 
EMTs to rush Chuck to the nearest hospital, John C. Lincoln in Phoenix, a new hospital and a new doctor. They discovered one of Chuck's vertebrae, eroded by cancer, had collapsed. However, this doctor had a plan. Surgically stop Chuck's testosterone, which was feeding the cancer, and start him on six months of chemo. Their goal was to just give me another six months, year, maybe two years of life. They said, if we can do that, you know, that's, that's amazing. I was excited about, about, the, uh, about the surgery. Chuck was in tremendous pain and on a morphine drip all night. The next morning after the successful surgery, he woke up in the recovery room and noticed there was someone next to his bed. I'm looking at Jesus, he's looking at me. His hand reaches out and touches me on the shoulder. I didn't see his mouth move, but I heard in my head, I got you. And I look up and he's gone. I was in the presence of Jesus and I'm flipping out. I'm just, everything's going through my head. I cannot understand what's going on here. Um, and so the question was, you know, why me? Moments later, Chuck noticed he was no longer in pain. That night, he decided his relationship with God would never be the same. I thank God and I started thinking about it. And I said, I know you've been probably trying my entire life, but you got my attention now. I completely surrender to you. I'm gonna let you orchestrate my life. Chuck started his chemo and stayed in the hospital for 10 days. Then he was transferred to the Mayo Clinic in Scottsdale for five weeks of additional rehab. There, he enjoyed walks in the surrounding desert and a deepening connection with God. The conversations that I had with God are just life-changing. And God said, as long as you're alive, be alive. So I said, that's what I'm going to do. I call it God school. After three months of treatment, Chuck returned to his doctor for an assessment. She's got a big smile on her face. She says, uh, your journey's not of medicine. It's miraculous. Your scans look like a normal, healthy guy. When Chuck completed chemo in November of 2015, there was no longer any trace of cancer in his body. And a bone scan showed absolutely no damage. She says, if we didn't know you and we hadn't seen your previous scans, we would think you're lying to us. Your bones are completely clean. I was completely healed 100% when uh, Jesus touched me on the shoulder. Chuck has since remarried and started a foundation which offers assistance to people battling cancer. His ride across the country is to raise awareness for his foundation and healing power that God offers. I see now the power of having a relationship with Jesus. That's what takes the stress and the worry off you. That's why you can still smile at the end of the day, even though you're going through something really, really, really tough. That makes a huge difference in your entire life. And that is why Jesus asks us to come to him with everything, to give him everything, to surrender our lives, if you will. No worry, no stress, because he's carrying it for us. That's the plan. That's the relationship we're supposed to have with him. How many of us carry unneeded, unwanted burdens when he's so willing to carry them for us? And you know, those burdens can make you sick. I'm thrilled by this story because it's so miraculous. You know, there is no way that man's bones could be rejuvenated like that except by miracle. God is in the miracle working business and we want to take some time to pray for you today to encourage your faith to trust him in the same way that Chuck did. I want to share with you the story of Alan. He lives in Bethany, Oklahoma. Alan had an accident over 20 years ago that left him with a serious neck injury. And since then, chronic pain, stiffness, limited movement were all part of his everyday existence. While watching this program on January the 13th this year, Alan heard you, Gordon, say, someone else, you've got strained muscles in the back, right side of your neck. I believe there was an injury. It's just very sore and painful. And you just felt that touch. In Jesus' name, be healed. Do what you couldn't do before. In Jesus' name, you're healed. Alan believed God. Alan was healed immediately. <laughs> oh, here's another healing. Here's Christopher from Farmer's City, Illinois. Had TMJ since he was 14. So 50 years of 50 years of pain. He saw many doctors, went through much therapy, all to no avail. 
He had daily problems with his jaw, his bite, and the way he had to eat. Well, Christopher was watching the 700 Club on January 20th this year. Terry said, someone else with chronic pain in your jaw from teeth that are, you just have problems. God is healing that for you right now. Just begin to praise him. It's happening as we speak. Well, Christopher believed God. The following day, he heard a loud crack in his jaw. The pain was gone. Fifty years of pain gone in an instant. These are miracles. Why do miracles happen? Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He always wants to heal. You don't have to bargain with him. The bargain's been made. He made it on the cross. By his stripes, you are healed. The apostle Peter added past tense, you were healed. Now, Jesus gave us the key to miracles. You find it in Mark chapter 11. Believe. Have faith in God is what he says. Have faith in God. Have faith that he loves you. Have faith that he wants to heal you. Have faith that the bargain's already been made. Have faith in God. And when you stand praying, mm -hmm. believe that you've already received and you will have it. Mm -hmm. So let's do that. Let's believe we've already received. When were your sins forgiven? Well, 2,000 years ago. When did you receive it? When you believed that the sacrifice had been made for you. When did you get healed? When you believe that by his stripes we are healed, we were healed. Let's do that. Let's do that together right now. Lord, we come to you. We come to you in faith, believing. And in faith, we reach out and touch that area of the body that needs healing. We come into agreement touching it. We say out loud over it, be healed now in Jesus' name and be every bit whole. Uh, there's a man, you're ch touching your right jaw. You heard the story about the TMJ, and you've got TMJ in your right jaw. In Jesus' name, be healed. There's someone else, I believe your name is Alan, and you've got a fractured vertebra in between your shoulders. You can't reach and touch it, but Jesus can reach and touch it right now. In Jesus' name, may that vertebra be, be restored, May the spine be straightened. May all the trauma of that be gone from you now. Let you have free movement now in Jesus' name. Just stretch forth your hands. Just lift them up to the Lord and realize you're now completely and totally healed. Terry? There's someone else. I don't know what your original issue is, but you have a problem with your hemoglobin. God is correcting that whole situation right now, and it's changing even as we're praying here together in Jesus' name. Someone else, you've been diagnosed with macular degeneration, and you're so fearful of it. God's healing that for you. It's not going to happen. It's not, not going to interrupt your life. I think many people are being healed of blood uh, conditions. Uh, one in particular where your red blood cells have trouble at, uh, with, with iron and carrying oxygen properly through your body. God is healing you from that right now. He's giving you life and giving it to you abundantly. All that shortness of breath and fatigue and all those things you have from this problem are gone now in Jesus' name. I also think leukemia is being healed now. Just, just any blood condition, just lift your hands to them. And just say, I, I receive it now. I receive your blood in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've been healed, let us know. Uh, share your good report. Give us a call. 1-800-700-7000. Here's a word from Matthew. With men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Let that all things being possible be your promise today. God bless.